Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris. Oh, what the heck? Rihanna's in Black Panther 2? No way. How is this? How is this even possible? No, I don't. I don't believe that. Google's never wrong about. Let me. Let me look up the Flash movie. The Flash. Uh, this has got to be right. Let's see here. Oh my goodness. So if we look at the casting of the Flash. And, no, what the hell? Johnny Depp, they fired him from Fantastic B so he can be reverse Flash in the Flash. Grant Gustin's also in it. Ray Fisher, Cyborg, even though he's fighting with Warner Brothers. No, impossible. No, I gotta, I gotta dive deeper into this. The, the Doctor Strange 2 right here. I gotta, it, they, that can't be wrong. It's gotta be accurate right here. What else is going on there? All right, looking at the cast listing. Holy mother of heavens, we have Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Ryan Reynolds, even Tom H he died, but he's coming back. Google, how could this- This next one, no, I need it. I need my detective mask on. I gotta have it. It's time to look up the big kahuna. Robert Pattinson's The Batman. Holy hell. Not only is Jared Leto returning as his Joker, it looks like Jonah Hill's coming in as the Penguin and Warner Brothers has discovered the power to resurrect Adam West as Batman. No way. This can't be. Deathstroke Joe Mangaletto. It's all here on Google Cast. It must be true. For the life of me, quit sending me screenshots of Google Cast. It's never right. But getting out to the things that we are going to talk about today on Side Flick, we do have a lot of movie news to dive in here today. We've got some set photos concerning Spider-Man 3, even a little small casting there. Some huge set photos for the Batman that I think are really awesome to look at. Even updates concerning the Final Destination movie reboot. That is so much more. So I many of you guys leave me your opinions down below on everything we discuss here today. What news got you excited? What got you interested? What could you not care about at all? But as always, make sure you're hitting that like button. It goes a long way with support in the side flick videos but starting us off here like we like to do every now and then on side flick if a smaller up-and-coming movie has an interesting premise i'm gonna bring it up to you guys and see how you feel about it but this one even though it's a smaller movie it's got some big celebrities attached to it we have here reports coming in that jennifer gardner ryan reynolds and mark ruffalo are attached to a time travel movie now this sounds interesting to me mark ruffalo will be playing the father of ryan reynolds and already i know a lot of you are like mm, that age don't really seem to coincide but reading the synopsis of what's going on here this is the plot for the film titled the adam project finds reynolds playing a man who travels back in time to get help from his 13 year old self and find his dad a brilliant physicist played by ruffalo in order to save the future right there ryan reynolds mark ruffalo time travel i'm feeling the back to the future-esque vibes right here i am all on board for this ain't that right martin mcfly I've said this before, I don't think we get enough Back to the Future-esque movies where people travel back in time to meet their younger selves and have a bit of an adventure, but this right here seems to be going in the direction of that, where it's maybe more of a sci-fi element type film than a comedy. And Ryan Reynolds, ever since Deadpool, has just gotten so much more work that he definitely deserves. I was still very excited to watch the movie Free Guy this year until it got delayed till next year. Mark Ruffalo, I think, is an immense talent. Jennifer Gardner, I think, is also great. So a movie like this definitely has my interest i want to know what this big secret is that he has to travel back in time to save the future those are some high stakes right there so i'm on board for this little time travel movie but i definitely want to know your opinion on this are you guys willing to watch ryan reynolds and mark ruffalo be part of a time travel sci-fi film jumping from there talking about something that was heavily requested yesterday that i'm only gonna bring up for you people who were asking for it we had the trailer drop for the second boss baby movie entitled boss baby family business and as a small segment that we do time to time here on side flick when we do get trailers we have to determine whether this is a treasure or trash and a lot of you people might not like this from me but i just don't know how i feel about this trailer right here first of all the idea of a second boss baby wasn't even something i thought i wanted then we heard the idea that the original characters in the first movie would now be adults and then we'd be following the babies of the main character i'm like okay but now looking at the trailer they did a major cop out and even though they're adults now they find a way to make them babies 
babies again so that they can interact with their baby selves. Like, okay, I guess. It looks like if you were a fan of the first Boss Baby and really enjoyed it, maybe you'll get a kick out of this. But the first Boss Baby movie was just okay to me at best. I think the best part to have come out of that movie is just this sound right here when I was watching it in the theater. I want you to suck it. You suck it. No, it's for you to suck. Ugh, I'm not sucking that. Suck it. I don't know where it's been. It's not where it's been. It's where it will take you. Haunts my dreams. So unfortunately for me, just out of pure interest and the direction and cop out that they're going with and not bringing Tobey Maguire back as the voice of the main character, I'm gonna give it a trash, but I definitely wanted to hear the opinion of people out there who are fans of Boss Baby. How did you feel about this trailer? Were you up for it? And do you like the direction this film is headed in? Maybe you guys could turn me around on it. Jumping from there to some of the latest set photos currently coming out of the Spider-Man 3 shoot. This is the MCU Spider-Man with Tom Holland. So much rumors and speculation going on with this film but for now we're just going to be touching upon the stuff we actually get and see for ourselves and I did a video about a week back where we got our first set video of Spider-Man and the character of MJ jumping off a crate it was really cool exciting to speculate about but now we have this other set photo coming out from Atlanta here from the shoot of Spider-Man 3 and what we look to be having is a setup for a bridge scene where a car is about to collapse off and I'm sure Spider-Man is pretty close by to save the day. Now immediately looking at a scene like this, this heavily reminds me of the bridge scene in The Amazing Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield. Like I remember the days when they actually released that clip online to the public and it made me fall in love with Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man right there. So I wonder if Tom Holland's going to get his own little version of that where he's saving the people from this or it could just be a disaster happening here and Spider-Man has to fight a foe and save these cars at the exact same time. But again, not really much. Still just kind of cool to look at and know that there's something exciting happening in the Spider-Man world and now we can picture some more scenes going on in this movie. The other information that was let loose online that again just leads us to big speculation is Spider-Man 3 put out a casting call for what seems to be a family member on the character of Ned's side. The description for this new character goes as Sony Pictures are looking to cast a Filipina actress between the ages of 50 and 80. It's only expected to be a small supporting role but site sources claim that the character will be one of Ned's relatives. We're assuming this means his mother or grandmother. Kind of interesting that in Spider-Man 3 we'll be exploring a little more of Ned's life, kind of lending more to the theory that some people are thinking that Ned in this film might go evil for some weird reason, even though it has not been set up in the previous two movies. But this all started with the sudden weight loss of Jacob Bolton, who plays Ned in the MCU, where he just lost a ton of weight and his character in the comics does turn into Hobgoblin. Maybe if we're exploring some more of his home life and what's happening there it could lead to why he would turn evil i just still don't think that's happening at all but nonetheless pretty interesting that the third film in they want to give us some backstory or home life looks at the character of net for you spider-man fans out there who admire my pops here what do you think of the set photo release from spider-man 3 and why do you think they're introducing the grandmother or a grandparent of ned in the third spider-man film from there getting to some horror movie news here some of you might know that there is a final destination reboot in the works heck it was heavily moving forward until the pandemic hit and now we have an update to what is happening with this film. We had the creator of the Final Destination franchise go ahead and respond to a fan on Twitter who asked Final Destination is my top favorite franchise. I loved every single sequel it should be a rule to cast Tony Todd in every sequel though and I hate the idea that we might never see another sequel. It's not truly over right? Series creator Jeffrey Reddick saying it's not over they were developing another Final Destination until COVID hit they'll pick it back up once the business starts back up. So that's kind of cool to know that the Final Destination reboot is not dead. It's still planned to be moving forward once everything kind of cools down and people are able to get back to work more. I'm sure these Final Destination films require a huge amount of cast members on set with some of the crazy stunts and deaths that they be having in these movies. I've always been a big fan of the Final Destination franchise. I get a huge kick out of them. They've made me so scared and traumatized of certain things from just driving my car on the highway to riding roller coasters. I can only imagine what kind of traumatizing things they're going to be doing now in this new era of horror and how they can reinvent the franchise and why they're even calling this one a reboot when every film, even though they've been connected, has been its own standalone thing. Either way, if you did want to know more about the Final Destination movie, they're saying that this time around it's going to focus on people who are first responders, people like firemen, EMTs, police officers, so you can expect whatever accident that happens in this Final Destination movie to involve 
these characters. My only request is cut back on the CGI and nonsense that was making the last couple films very cheesy and go practical, go gory, and make me scared to be alone in Death Around the Corner. How do you guys feel about Final Destination not being dead and still moving forward once this whole pandemic is over? We know the Batman directed by Matt Reeves and starring Robert Pattinson is still hard at work, but it has gone completely silent since they were filming in Liverpool and parts of Chicago. Everything kind of went behind closed doors and then out of nowhere yesterday we were let known of a bunch of set photos on the set of the Batman that I think are really intriguing right here and it's not only what seems to be the entrance to the Batcave but it's a closer look to what this Gotham is going to be looking like. Starting out with some photos here we were given this construction being built what seems to be a little waterfall lake and inside you gotta believe that has to be the entrance for the Batcave. I mean even here off to the side there seems to be a little spot where maybe the new Batmobile can go diving in here. We've seen it before in different incarnations of the Batman that this is kind of how he hides his Batcave. But man, I am just fascinated that the cast and Warner Brothers of Batman have built this giant thing for the Batman movie. Who knows if this was always part of the plan or because of things like COVID, they were forced to do this stuff. But you gotta believe when they do things like this for a movie they strongly believe in the product that is being made or else they would not go through all this trouble remember this is life size right here this ain't no miniature model and i think it looks really detailed and well done when we move over to some of these other set photos we basically see what the streets of gotham are going to be looking like and it kind of gives us a better idea of a villain we've been hearing about that might be showing up in the batman if you look at some of these buildings here that are supposed supposed to be I'm guessing the poorer side of Gotham even though Gotham is all poor we have some buildings that have been clearly set on fire or have been touched by fire because they have black smoke left behind and if you guys know early talks in the Batman there was said that there was a character named Firefly who is a professional arsonist goes around flying like a firefly with a flamethrower and that he would be one of the villains showing up in the movie that was probably hired by another villain to just cause some trouble if not this could just be what some of the bad streets of Gotham look like another interesting interesting photo here is from a different angle where we kind of see again how dirty and slumped up Gotham is. It's going to be interesting to see Batman walking around these areas whether he's undercover as Bruce Wayne or if he's in his actual Batman getup. One thing I want to point out if you zoom in on this photo you have it saying here Gotham Harbor Iceberg Fish. Now, a lot of people, when they saw the word iceberg, they thought, oh, Mr. Freeze. It's Mr. Freeze right there. That's an Easter egg. We're going to see Mr. Freeze somehow. Unfortunately, no, that seems to be more in connection with the Penguin, played by Colin Farrell. So this might be the place of business for the Penguin. Him working with fish might be where he gets one of his names, along with his horrible appearance. It could still very well be connected to Mr. Freeze, but in the past, we've seen his layer more to be a shutdown ice cream factory or the science building where he was studying on how to make a cure for his wife. Another couple of set photos that are interesting to me that seem to be taking up a lot of the shots here is some snowed up areas what seems to be maybe a town hall center for the Batman movie. This to me seems like final showdown material just the way they have everything set up and focusing in on that circle. I would not be surprised if the main baddie and Batman are having a showdown in this specific spot. I think it'd be a perfect spot for that. It also lets us wonder in other set photos and from the trailer of the Batman it didn't really seem like it was snowing so this lets us know again that this Batman movie is going to be taking place over the course of several weeks maybe even several months where we go through the different holidays from Halloween all the way to Christmas hence the title Long Halloween. Still really awesome to see they are putting in so much detail and work into this Gotham I think this might have the chance to be one of my favorite Gothams put on screen right here just trying to zoom in and seeing all the homeless people on the the streets and the signs they have here this film is going to be super detailed here with some of the practical effects they're throwing in but i mean still you can see some of the blue screen where they're going to fill up and show off the rest of the city with some skylight and really blend the place up together but you guys take a look at these batman set photos do they get you interested do they get you excited i mean just the level of detail here just I think it's fantastic. But that is just all the movie news we currently have going on right now, guys. I want to know your opinions down below on everything we discuss here today. The best part of Side Flick is getting down below and reading your guys' opinions. Don't forget to be subscribed if you haven't already. If you want more movie-related content, hit that like button. Follow me on Twitter at 3 c Film Review. As always, I'm Chris. Take care.